Welcome back to the current topic of uh, geospatial information in agricultural drought assessment. In the last video lecture, we have discussed about the procedure for prediction and monitoring of drought. In the current video lecture, I hope by the end of this uh, video lecture, I hope you will be able to list the different drought indicators and uh, describe them briefly. Apart from that, I hope you will be able to explain the role of NADAMS in assessing the drought in our country. The contents are also arranged in the same fashion. First, we will uh, see the five agricultural drought indicators followed by the role of NADAMS in our country. And lastly, we will conclude the topic with an assignment. Coming to the agricultural drought indicators, which are extensively used all across the globe, we do have five uh, agricultural drought indicators. The five have been mentioned there. The NDVI, generally termed as Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which is an exclusively used indicator all across the globe. Vegetation Condition Index, which in turn depends upon NDVI. The Temperature Condition Index, which monitors the temperature changes the advanced microwave scanning radiometer and the evaporation index. So based upon these five indicators, there will be an assessment of the agricultural drought. We will look into the first one, the normalized difference vegetation index, generally referred to as NDVI. As we all know, since we have been recently employing the satellite images, to understand the vegetation in any particular area. The first point itself states that vegetation in any, any area can be estimated by remote sensing studies using optical domains. So the NDVI is a simple graphical indicator that can be used to analyze remote sensing measurements often from a space platform assessing whether or not the target being observed contains live green vegetation. So the meaning of this statement is that from the satellite we will be looking onto the earth and we will be capturing the pictures. So based upon the reflection or the, based on the observation of the chlorophyll content in that particular area. So we can say whether there is a vegetation or not in that particular area. Now I will show you a picture before moving on to this. Okay, we will complete this one. See the optical domains which are seen from the spatial platforms. Optical domains or the visible region which has a strong chlorophyll absorption and a near infrared region which has a strong reflectance. So this is the visible region and this is the near infrared region. If the percentage of the reflected radiation in the near infrared and red portion of the spectrum are represented by this particular thing. So NDVA is basically calculated using this particular uh, formula. I hope you try to remember this particular formula. A higher NDVA, NDVA basically varies between uh, minus 1 to plus 1. So a normal NDVA basically it will be somewhere between 0 0.1 to 0 0.6 even though its extreme values are minus 1 and plus 1. A higher NDVA basically indicates that there is a very greater green leaf area and there is a very good biomass in that area. Now I will show you a picture of uh, NDVA of the globe. This is the NDVA of the globe if seen from a satellite image. Now if you carefully see, negative values of NDVA, values approaching minus 1, they correspond to water. So this means NDVA value is minus 1. So values which are closer to 0, some let us suppose minus 0.1 to plus 0.1. They generally correspond to this, uh, this is uh, rocks, sand or snow or something like that. See all these uh, Greece land and Antarctica, this will be some minus 0.1 or some, this will be some 0.1 plus 0.1. So low positive values, see this is the low positive values, this light green color, this corresponds to shrub or grasslands. So in our country also light green. So it will be varying from between 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. So this low green or uh, low positive values, they represent shrub or grasslands. Now, well, high values which are closer to 1, they represent uh, 
they indicate tropical rainforest see this particular area where we can see the amazon forest and where can we can see the african forest here we can see the himalayan forests and here the burma indonesia the thick forest they will be uh, in very thick green color so which means that the ndva value in these areas is somewhere around 1 so with this ndva is uh, widely accepted as one of the agricultural drought assessment index and see the ndva if uh, focused on to our particular country if you carefully see this green indicates that there is a good amount of uh, vegetation in this particular area whereas these uh, yellowish colors and uh, dark red colors they will indicate that the vegetation is very low and they may be purely somewhere like a sand or uh, ice or some other things so these images will be taken up from the satellite at regular intervals and they will show what is the amount of vegetation in that particular region at that particular time now vegetation condition index which in turn depends upon the ndvi minimum and maximum values this is also one of uh, the assessment indicators so these are the different indicators you can go through all these things see advanced microwave scanning radiometer which basically measures the brightness temperature of the soil which is fundamentally related to the dielectric property of the soil so how much water from the earth is cooling the earth's surface like that so and evaporation index so how much uh, amount of water is being uh, evaporated so evaporation index gives uh, information on that so like that you will be asked a question to describe the to list the different uh, assessment indicators uh, i hope you can list the four or five indicators and uh, write in small brief information on that and uh, you may be asked to write in detail about the ndvi for two marks also now we will move on to nadams as we already have studied in the video lecture one that uh, nadams is a country uh, system which basically monitors and assesses the agriculture drought in our country so nadams stands for uh, national agricultural drought assessment and monitoring system i think in the first ppt first uh, video lecture i think uh, it was uh, n was uh, somewhere i think it was written as a natural but actually you correct it it will be na na national agricultural drought assessment and monitoring system so this is located at nrsa nadams national remote sensing agency and with the support of the indian meteorological department and various uh, state departments of the agriculture nadams works in assessing the agricultural drought in our country so see the important things operational at national remote sensing agency with support of imd and various state departments of the agriculture and uh, this particular nadams it provides agricultural drought information to the state governments it shares the information with the state governments and central governments in terms of uh, prevalence how many how much time it will prevail and how severe it will be and uh, how persistent it will be with respect to country with respect to state and in which districts it may long last and uh, sub district level also presently it covers 13 states of the country during kharif season and it uses particularly ndvi derived from coarse to moderate resolution satellite data for assessing the drought for assessing and monitoring the droughts and uh, see the last point fortnightly and monthly maximum value composites are carried out from daily ndvi data so daily ndvi data is been taken and fortnightly which means for every 2 weeks or 4 uh, weeks maximum value composites are uh, calculated and then they monitor the spectral changes resulting from the drought so based upon this they will give information to the state governments and in turn to the district collectors to uh, evaluate the droughts to understand the drought in that particular region now the vegetation index derived which is derived from the spectral response which we get from the satellite images these are plotted as season profiles for each administrative unit you take the district as an administrative unit for consideration now 
So, such uh, NDVA levels will be taken as uh, some average values. So, lowering of NDVA values from normal reflects there is a moisture stress in vegetation resulting from prolonged rainfall deficiency. So, you will be having over a prolonged period of time, you will be having an average value of NDVA which will be reflecting in that particular area. So, if you have less NDVA, then it indicates that there will be a uh, stress on the crops because of the deficiency in the moisture. And uh, there may be some other reasons also for uh, lowering of your NDVA. There may be pest attacks or there may be nutritional deficiency. The soil may not have sufficient nutrients or there may be some geochemical effects because of uh, solving of some chemical compositions into the soil. So, all these things they may lower the NDVA. So, comparison of NDVA profile of reporting year and previous normal year uh, provides the assessment of drought impact. Now, this is the, this table gives us a agricultural drought warning and declaration in Adams project. This, based upon this, they will provide the assessment. So, first of all, in the months of June, July and August, if the agricultural situation is normal, then the assessment is considered to be very normal. Let us suppose if the process of agricultural situation is slow, then they will give the title as watch. So, it must be careful. So, there is ample scope for recovery or no external intervention is needed means they will be just monitoring the situation. If the agricultural situation is very low and if there is always a need for intervention, then they will give a alert sign which means that somebody is supposed to intervene to improve the situation and you are supposed to develop some contingency plans to minimize the losses. Whereas in the months of September and October, uh, if the crops have suffered stress slightly, then they will consider it as mild drought. And if there is a considerable loss in production, it will be considered as moderate drought. And if there is a high risk and uh, there is a significant reduction in the crop yield, then it is considered as a severe drought. So, based upon these uh, things, we can, uh, they will give these assessments. Or if they have given these assessment means, we are supposed to understand that these are the situations in these particular months. So, I hope you have understood the role of NADAMS, how they use the satellite images in understanding the vegetation and based upon that they will give the assessments and uh, based upon the NDVIs uh, by comparing it with the previous years they will give the assessments and based upon the assessments we are supposed to have these implications. So coming to the conclusions, as you all know drought is a progressive disaster and it will surely affect a large number of population in one way or the other. It will be having economic impacts, social impacts and environmental impacts. With the availability of huge amount of ground based metallurgical and agricultural data and several drought indices both from the ground and from the outer space platform like the NDVI and EEF etc. Many initiatives have been tracking drought in the recent past and in our country particularly. NADAM's program has been monitoring and assessing the agricultural drought. That's it. And coming to the assignment, uh, the due date will be extended for you. We are supposed to complete the assessment assignment in the first week of May, before the first week of May. These are the few questions which you are supposed to answer. Don't ask, don't answer them in a detailed fashion. So, you just answer them very briefly. In this particular one, drought is a progressive disaster which affects large population. You just go through this one and uh, you justify the statement or at least you try to justify what we have studied that drought is going to have an environmental impact, social impact and also on the economic impact of a country. Thank you all.